California quake alert. Big One fears as an active fault line has been found and is a sleeping giant. Sean Martin of Express UK reports on what USGS has revealed. There's a fault line lying beneath California which was thought to be dormant and is actually alive and kicking. And scientists warn it could cause large damaging earthquakes. California is extremely prone to earthquakes, as we know. It's in a subduction zone. San Andreas Fault taking 75% of the subduction pressure and the Walker Lane Fault System, which is parallel to the east, takes up about 25%. Now, with several fault lines running beneath the Golden State, California, these include the Hayward Fault, the Newport, Inglewood, and San Jacinto Faults, and perhaps the most famous, of course, San Andreas, the scientists have now found another fault which has the potential to cause damage. It's the Wilmington Blind Thrust Fault, and it was thought to be inactive. However, scientists now discovered that it is merely a sleeping giant. The fault runs directly under Los Angeles, and is one of the country's biggest cities, as we know. Three-dimensional construction of what is beneath the surface of L.A. shows the fault is not inactive, it's just slow-moving. Data previously suggested the last time the fault erupted, causing an earthquake, was two million years ago. New research carried out at Harvard University with the U.S. Geological Survey and experts from University of Southern California shows that it will cause a major earthquake every 3,200 to 4,700 years. This is amazing stuff. Amazing. Franklin Wolf, the doctoral student in the Structural Modeling and Earth Resource Group at Harvard, told the Los Angeles Times, quote, it doesn't rupture frequently, but it's like a sleeping giant beneath the harbor. Just because it's slow does not mean it's not dangerous." End quote. Now Wolf goes on to say that he does not foresee it causing another major quake for at least another 3,000 years, but when it does, the tremor could be massive. The report was published in the Bulletin of the Seismological Society of America, says that the resulting earthquake could be as large as a magnitude 7. According to the analysis from Michigan Tech, an earthquake registering seven magnitude on the Richter scale has the potential to cause serious damage and a magnitude seven, of course, is considered a major earthquake. The report said, we define the Wilmington blind thrust as a tectonically active fault capable of generating large damaging earthquakes through analysis of 2D and 3D seismic reflection surveys. And they say, this overturns the long-held view that the fault became dormant in the late Pliocene, barring its inclusion in the state-of-the-art regional earthquake hazard assessments. The size of the fault suggests that it's capable of generating moderate magnitude earthquakes around magnitude 6.3 to 6.4, whereas potential linkages with other nearby faults pose a threat of larger multi-segment events upwards of magnitude 7. So it's magnitude 7 and above. Now, these earthquakes, they say, would directly impact the overlying ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, as well as the broader Los Angeles metropolitan area. And uh, this is a sign entering Los Angeles. It limits about 3.5 million people. This is one of the previous 6.7, uh, 6.9 earthquakes we had a couple of years ago, a couple of decades ago. And uh, this is the fault right here, as you can see, running through the bay, running through uh, areas of the Long Ports, the Long Bay Ports, one of the busiest in the country. And of course, it would be devastating on the area, in the area of Los Angeles. And according to the Bulletin of the Seismological Society of America, Geoscience World, and I'll leave a link below for you, the Wilmington Blind Thrust Fault. This is our article of August 6, 2019. It's an active concealed earthquake source beneath Los Angeles, California. So that gives us more things to worry about. 
It's amazing how many fault lines run through Los Angeles. And the abstract says, we define the Wilmington blind thrust as a tectonically active fault, capable of generating large damaging earthquakes through analysis of 2D and 3D seismic reflection surveys, petroleum and water wells, and recent mapping of groundwater aquifers in the southwestern Los Angeles basin. This overturns a long-held view that the fault became dorm dormant in the late Pliocene, barring its inclusion in state-of-the-art regional earthquake hazard assessments. The size of the fault suggests that it's capable of generating moderate magnitude earthquakes, that's 6.3, 6.4, whereas potential linkages with other nearby faults, for example, the Huntington Beach, the Taurus, and the Compton Faults, pose the threat of larger multi-segment events, that is, larger than a magnitude 7. These earthquakes would directly impact the overlying ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, as well as the broader Los Angeles metropolitan area. And now, we know what that means. Uh, we've stated many times, because we uh, read the uh, article that was written in the spring, it was from the uh, Southern California Earthquake Center, S-E-C-E-C, -E -E concerning the fact that the build, the high-rise buildings all along the West Coast, you know, from Portland all the way to, uh, to uh, Los Angeles, they're not able to take a magnitude 7 quake or more. Well, we've, we've seen the destruction that has happened with uh, smaller quakes, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9. And uh, the geologists had warned the officials, the government officials, the developers, and the engineers that the underlying uh, sediment was underestimated as to the power to sustain these high-rise buildings. So it saw it, the, the uh, uh, earth is, was softer than originally believed, which means that there's more of a risk of the high-rise buildings uh, not being able to uh, stand securely, that they would be in risk of falling or cracking or whatever the case may be. You can understand what I'm talking about. And it would be a risk to life. The geologists warned everyone there that they have to immediately retrofit all these high-rise buildings. That's easier said than done because who's going to pay for all this? The government had no, no money to do this. The developers had no money to do this. And uh, the clients of the engineers had no money to do this. So they uh, delayed the changing of the building code until a later time. And then, of course, this was around April of uh, this year that this uh, seminar convention took place, this meeting took place. And then we had the... Uh, 6.4 of July 4th and the 6. Point, uh, the 7.1 of July 5th and the building code still has not changed. The good thing is that University of California Dean, the lady there, it's a lady and uh, she has announced a couple of days ago that all the buildings of University of California will be retrofitted to be properly anti-seismic to save the lives of the people in the buildings, the students and the faculty. So I'll leave links below for you for this. The Wilmington Blind Thrust Fault. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, 
because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.